This is John Black, Super Chemist. This is not an instructional video. It is just a blog showing a video account of some chemistry experiments I have done or am learning about. I do not go over all safety concerns, so if you repeat anything in the video, you do it at your own risk. Well, this is John Black, Super Chemist. I bought some of this clear ammonia, thinking since it said clear, and it was just ammonia in water. Although I looked up the MSDS, it's 1 to 3 percent ammonium, ammonia plus surfactants. So there's soap in there, and when you shake it up, you can see there's a bunch of soap. Okay, here's your equation. It's a simple equation. You know, if you put ammonia in water, you make ammonium hydroxide. We're just going to basically put ammonium hydroxide with a hydrochloric acid. We've got an acid in the base, and what do you get when you get an Arrhenius acid in an Arrhenius base? You get salt water. You get ammonium chloride. One mole of that, one mole of that, will make one mole of this. It's that simple. So I had about a liter of this. Uh, the density is about 0.98. I don't have to be exact here, you know. Uh, so I multiplied that to find out that it's my liter of ammonia solution is 980 grams. Now if 1% by weight is ammonia, then I'd multiply that to get 9.8 grams. If there's 1%, then there's 9.8 grams of ammonia. If there's 2%, then there's this. If there's 3%, then there's this. I'm just basically doubling it here and tripling it here. Uh, so if I, if this is the molar mass of ammonia, I divide each of these numbers by that, by 17. So I can see that 9.8 grams of ammonia is 57.64% of a mole, or of 17 grams, right? Same here, you know, I just doubled to 9.8, right, because it's 2% instead of 1, and I divided by the molar mass of ammonia. And I find out that it's 115.3% of a mole. Same down here, times 3. What I want you to notice is this number corresponds to how much hydrochloric acid you need. Here you need 57.6, the same as the percentage. Here you need 115.3, the same as the percentage. And same here. <laughs> because 100 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid that you get at the uh, hardware store, it's, it's about 1 mole per 100 milliliters. So 57% of 1 mole would be 57% of a mil of 100 milliliters, which would be 57 milliliters. Now the ammonium chloride is 53.5 grams per mole. So I just so I just took that 53.5 times 0.57 or 57 percent. Same down here. I took that 53.49 and I times it by 1.15 uh, or 115 percent and that's how I got my yield that I should get. Now I want you to think about it. This stuff is only going to, this stuff we're making, like let's say there's one percent of ammonia in there. We're going to make 30 grams or 31 grams of ammonium chloride. But we're only putting in say 57.6 milliliters of HCl. And only 38.3 grams of ammonium chloride will dissolve in 100 milliliters of water. But if we use this amount of HCl, right, again we times it by our density, so we'd know that this many milliliters is this many grams of HCl. Then we take that and we times it by 0.7, because 70% of that is about, give or take, is water, right? So how much of this HCl is water that we're putting in there? We're only putting in 46.4 milliliters of water. And yet we're making 30 grams, which needs 100 milliliters of water. So we don't have enough water if we only just put in the concentrated stuff. So every time I put in 57.6 milliliters of hydrochloric acid, I'm going to throw in an extra 100 milliliters of water. Okay? And that way it will also dilute the acid so it doesn't heat up as much when we bubble the, the ammonia through it. And also it will have enough water in there definitely to uh, dissolve 
you know, the ammonium chloride that we make. We don't want it precipitating out. So here's my apparatus. I got a thousand milliliters of my, or give or take, of uh, the the clear ammonia water. And I'm gonna. I have a big ice column on it. And then you can see I'm just distilling it. That's all I'm doing. But what I want to do is instead of distilling it, the gas is going to be driven off. And then it comes down here. Any gas will come out here through this hose. And then I got it attached to a glass tube, which is almost to the bottom, but not quite. And then I have it inside this glass thingy so I can put some ice in here just in case. This is where I'll put the hydrochloric acid in the water. And just in case there is anything that distills over, it can always, you know, be caught in here. You know what I mean? I have the Vigorex column so that, uh, you know, if there's any soap in there, I don't know what the deal is with the soap. That's what, if there was no soap, it'd be no big deal. But with the soap, it might come up with it. I don't know. Uh, but we'll soon find out. Also, this receiving flask actually acts as a suckback trap. So if this gets sucked back all the way up in here, this round bottom flask is 500 milliliters, and this is 500 milliliters, and I'm not even going to fill it up that high. Um, so it can definitely take the suck back. And if anything gets distilled over, it can be caught in there. Well, it took a while, but it's almost boiling. You can see it's starting to get up into the, starting to reflux a little bit. Starting to get a little bit of water in here. Even though it's not boiling, I think because, you know, it's got the uh, ammonia gas coming out and it's pulling water with it a little bit. And that's why it's condensing up here, I think. Because uh, it's not really dripping a lot. Um, but the... Although, this has been bubbling about one every four seconds. And now it's bubbling, let's see. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Now it's coming every two seconds. So once it starts... Uh, boiling and the you know refluxing more it's going to pick up it's taking me a while to get it up to the temp because I don't want to break my you know my 2000 milliliter flask um, but basically it's just a waiting game don't want to go too fast you don't want to go slow either to where you're going to suck back stuff so we're just going to keep doing this until uh, I don't know we'll see starting to reflux but you can see it's bubbling now it's getting soapy yeah it stopped bubbling and you can see it's just bouncing back and forth right here but it is starting to distill and the uh, soap bubbles are kind of staying in the pot so so far so good um, so I was just showing what you do if you have soap. If you don't have soap, you can do this a lot stronger the way I did it. If you wanted to just bubble in the, or if you just wanted to make anhydrous ammonia and you just wanted to bubble it in, you didn't even want to deal with uh, distilling it. <coughs> okay, I'm distilling it because I want to show you what to do if you have ammonia with no soap in it. You, can, you don't have to do anything. You can just mix them together, your ammonia and your your ammonia solution and your HCl, mix them together and you're done, you know. Uh, but if you wanted anhydrous ammonia gas, you would put your ammonia source here. Uh, you would have ice cold water going through here and you would strongly reflux it. Strongly. Uh, that way no water gets makes it past this ice cold condenser, but all the ammonia will. And then you would have some kind of drying agent in this. And you would use one of your, you know, your uh, thermometer, you know, where you put your thermometer in. But instead, you put a hose on this, right? You leave your hose, and you fill this up with some kind of desiccant, some kind of drying agent, right? And the ammonia has to go through it, 
it come out at the bottom and it has to come up through this thing here so it'll have to pass through whatever's in this class and then I didn't draw it but you put a suck back trap in between these two but then you can send this into your reaction pot and then it will be dry uh, you know at this point it'll be wet or moist ammonia send it through your desiccant now you have dry ammonia and you can send it right into your reaction keep in mind you should have a suck back trap right there um, but it's that simple to make it anhydrous um, and you can if you don't have that soap in there you can really reflux it uh, and not have to deal with even distilling anything. I could have put my ammonium chloride in here. I didn't even have to dry it. So I would be sending it into HCl and water, right? <clears throat> so I could have just uh, put my condenser here, refluxed this really hard so that only the ammonia came off with a little bit of water, but we don't care because we'd be directing it right into our HCl water solution. And then we wouldn't have to distill anything. <laughs> like I said, I distilled it because I want to show you what to do if you just have clean ammonia. Now we have clean ammonia water, right? I'm going to show you how to make the ammonium chloride. Now why didn't I just send my ammonia directly into the, you know, maybe through a suck back trap and then directly into the reaction part, meaning the HCl and the water? Because I would have had bumping of that soap. That soap would have bumped up and got contaminated everything so if you got soapy stuff you got to do it like I did in the video otherwise you're going to get some bumping okay so now we can just pretend that we bought some ammonia in, in water and it was didn't have any soap in it that's what we have basically here I ended up getting 600 milliliters Anyways, my point is is I'm going to mix this now with the uh, hydrochloric acid but I put it in the freezer because I want to cool down so it's really exothermic adding a base to a acid, you know, an acid to a base. 